Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve the five gradient problems that you'll find beginning with page number 995. Please turn to it. Page 995. Always make sure the book is in front of you so you can follow the work. If at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to get hold of me, if you that you would like to work with me, you can you can get hold of me by sending me an email at Kishwani Prep at iCloud.com. Alright, let's take a look at number 16. Number 16 says that we're going to rent a board, a board that's going to cost us $60 per hour in rental fee. In addition to $60 per hour in rent, we also have to pay $10 for some registration for the course. Safety, safety course that is. The question simply is how many hours can I rent the board if I only have $280? Well, if we only have $280, first we have to spend the $10 for the safety course. That leaves us only $240. $240 will allow us to rent it for 4 hours. Even though, even though we will have $30 left over, even though we will have $30 left over at this point, but do not do not type in, do, do not grade in 4.5. 4.5 will be marked as wrong because the question clearly tells us that we can rent it only by the hour. We cannot rent it by the fraction of an hour. They will not rent the boat to us for four and a half hours, for half an hour. It's either four hours or five hours. We can't afford five. We're going to rent it for four hours. Number 17. So the answer here is four. Number 17 is a very straightforward equation. 2 times p plus 1 plus 8 times p minus 1, we are told, is equal to 5p. The question simply is what's the value of p? Straightforward, simple linear equation. Let's open it up. That's 2p plus 2 plus 8p minus 8 has to equal 5p. Let's bring all the p's to one side. So this is 2p plus 8p plus 10p. Bring the 5p here. Equals. Bring the 8 over there. Bring the 2 over there. So 5p is equal to 6. And therefore p will equal to 6 over 5. Don't waste your time trying to bring the, convert this into decimal. It's not like it will take you forever to do so, but it's unnecessary. Just create in 6 over 5. Number 18. Number 18 says half times 2x plus y is equal to is equal to 21 over 2. That's the first equation. And the second equation that they give us is y is equal to 2x. The question simply is, what's the x coordinate of the solution? Let's find out, shall we? Well, first thing we notice is that, is that we got a 2 at the bottom over here, 2 at the bottom over here, if we multiply both sides of the equation by 2, we can get rid of this bloody thing. What we are left with is, all we are left here is 2x plus y is equal to 21. And 2x, 2x we are told is equal to y. So 2x is equal to, 2x is equal to y. So y plus y is equal to 21, 2y is equal to 21 y is equal to 21 over 2, but we can't stop there, 
we're not interested in y, we're interested in x. So we have to go over there. So y is equal to 21 over 2 is equal to 2x. You want to separate the x by itself, bring the 2 down here, and we'll find that x is equal to 21 over 2 times 2 or 21 over 4 is what we want to grade in. Number 19. Number 19 is on the next page, except this time we have a quadratic equation. We are told that x has to be, we told that a has to be positive, x cannot be equal to 2, and question simply is what's the value of a. The reason they tell us the x cannot be equal to 2 is because if x were equal to 2, it's hypothetical, if it were, actually x equal to 2 is not going to bother us anything. I don't know why they make a quick fuss about it. Oh, x cannot equal to negative 2. Of course not. X cannot equal to negative 2, because if x were negative 2, negative 2 and positive will give a 0 and this whole thing will become undefined. Because if you divide anything by 0, it becomes undefined. That's why that condition is there. Don't worry about it. We just want to solve for a. Let's find the common denominator of x plus 2 all squared. So here we simply have 2x plus b minus 2 times we already have x plus 2 here, we have x plus 2 whole squared, so we're just going to have x plus 2 here. a over x plus 2 whole squared. Now where does this b come from? That's not a b, that's a 6. That is a 6, not a b. There we go. Now we have the same, same denominator, we have a common denominator on both sides. It ceases to play any role, it plays no role anymore. We can ignore it. And there is our a. 2x plus 6 minus 2x minus 2x minus 2. There you go. 2x is going to cancel out with 2x. 6 minus 2 is 4. There we go. a is equal to 4, which is not what I have in my notes. Ah, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Which is why you mustn't be cocky. You mustn't be careless like I was just was. 2x and then, which is which is why I always use the arrows. I don't know why I didn't do it this time, and I paid the price. I paid dearly for it. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Which is why I always use arrows in my work, because it's not worth trying to save a fraction of a second and, and make getting it wrong. Number 20, a is equal to 2. Number 20, we're given something like this. This outside angle we are told is 106. This guy we are told is 23. And the question is, how much is this guy? Let's begin the process, shall we? Let's first find this one. Let's first find this one. Angle 1 here will simply be 180 minus 106 because the straight line that's the 106 so this must be 180 minus 106 that's the 4 94 it's a 94 and that is not what I have we have a 4 here yes the 94 and 106 will become 200 94 plus 106 is 200 it's 180 it's not 94 it's 74 
because this becomes a 7. It's a 74. Let's first find out what 74 and 23 is. 97, which means this guy here, let's call it angle 2, this must be 180 minus 97. 180 minus 100 would have been 80, so it's 83. And therefore x is equal to 180 minus 83. Since 100, since 100 minus 97 is 83, therefore 100 minus 83 would simply be 97. You see, for example, for example, if 10 minus 7 is 3, then 10 minus 3 must be 7. Same thing. If 100, 180 minus 97 is 83, then 183, 180 minus 83 would be 97. That's our x. The answer is 97. We're going to stop right here. It's the end of the section. We'll meet again tomorrow, of course, and we begin the next section. In the meantime, as I said before, if you wish to get hold of me, you can do so by sending me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright? Bye now.